chat room. Girl, girl, who loves orange soda? I do, I do, I do. Take me back to the years I'm missing. All day, all night, French kissing. Oh, how you help me grow. I never want to let you go. Girl, you took my breath away. Got a whole lot more to say. What's another rhyme for A? I wish that we could stay in the night days. Welcome to another episode of the web show featuring two tiny hounds that have separation anxiety. We're fully dogged up, Buddy yeah. and Meg. It is a 90s kind of themed show, well 90s and 80s themed show, but I'm especially excited because I absolutely love the 90s. Uh, and Just a bit. And, our, and my next guest on the web show, Ben Giroux, is responsible for that amazing song that you saw in the intro. But stop! <coughs> Handbrake. Before we go there, you must remember to stay to the end because we are going to be announcing the winner of this fantastic, amazing Back to the Future Bob Gale compendium. You may remember we had Bob on the show. It was absolutely incredible chatting to him about one of my favourite movies of all time, Back to the Future. And this book, there was the chance to win it. And it is an absolute essential addition to any Back to the Future Heads library. So stay till the end of the show. And, and don't, don't fast forward either, we know your game. And then be kind, rewind, because then you can be reminded that quick plug on lifeaftermovies.com, of course we sell the Blu-rays and DVD of Life After Flash and Life After Navigator. We now sell these Flash Crew patches. Very cool. On the website. And don't forget, we have jo signed Joey Kramer Life After the Navigator Blu-rays. Now, the extra 40 pounds that costs to get the signed one goes 100% directly to Joey. So support Joey, support the film, uh, lifeaftermovies.com. But let's get into the interview, Ben Giroux. I can't begin to say how many times I have seen A, the Back to the 90s video, and now I've discovered Back to the 80s video. The creator, writer, director, along with Jensen Reed, Ben Giroux is on the web show with me. I'm so excited. Uh, ben, how are you? You know what? I, I don't even know how to answer that question anymore a year into a global pandemic, but I'm alive. I'm good. I'm still inside after a year of quarantine. Uh, I'm doing good. I will go back oh, to the 80s. So you were born in 84, which we know from your Back to the 80s video. Very clever. Um, what was your childhood like? Very sort of colorful, uh, uh, eccentric, quirky childhood because my parents, uh, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and my parents owned uh, a comic book store for almost 40 years. So I grew up around Superman and Batman and a very sort of colorful environment. And then in addition to that, a very funny environment. You know, I grew up watching old Three Stooges uh, clips with my dad, my sister and I I grew up watching Nickelodeon animated shows. I'm now a voice actor with Nick Animation, so life has totally come full circle. But I feel like a lot of the pop culture that defined the 90s really uh, was paramount to my childhood experience. And uh, I think that sort of began my love for the concept of nostalgia. N nostalgia to me uh, gives me this feeling of warmth and uh, it's so familiar because it's it's um, there's something really simple and nice about thinking about our childhood, especially in the 90s where nobody had iPhones yet. Uh, you know, we weren't sort of overcome by technology so much that, um, you know, it got in the way. So yeah, uh, life in Phoenix, Arizona growing up was was colorful and fun and quirky as the son of uh, two owners of a comic book store. Your um, acting reel is impressive from years before, I believe you actually started to make your own content. Did you want to be in entertainment from a very early age? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, you and I, before we even started talking uh, with the recording, we're talking about growing up in the VHS uh, generation. And so even in high school, even as, as early as junior high, I can think back to trying to create my own films and my own, you know, little uh, clips with my friends, a lot tougher editing on VHS back in the day and little mini DV cameras rather than everybody walking around with movie cameras in their pockets now. Um, but yeah, I, I always wanted to be an actor first and foremost. Um, I went to film school uh, here in Los Angeles, the University of Southern California, also studied theater. And I was quite lucky. I, I, I booked uh, my first television show, which was a Fairly Brothers pilot on Fox. 
uh, as I was graduating college in 2007. Uh, that sort of segued into the show Psych on the USA Network. And then I consistently just started working as an actor. And one of the things that I found was Hollywood and the entertainment industry wants to pigeonhole you and put you in a contained box. For me, I'm a short guy, I'm 5'2", so I was booking a lot of short, specific roles. You know, at a certain point, you just buy yourself your own Christmas elf tights when you keep working as a Christmas elf. <laughs> so I was playing a lot of height-specific stuff, and while it was fun, uh, it wasn't 100% satisfying because I knew I was capable of so much more. So as my acting career was was continuing to, to thrive, really, I was very lucky to be cons consistently working in television, um, I, I realized I wanted to start making my own stuff. And one of the things that I had always wanted to do is a Busta Rhymes kind of braggadocious music video about being a short guy uh, called Little Dude Anthem. And I do a lot of voiceover. This is years ago. I was at my, my voiceover agency and I was talking to one of the booth engineers there, talking to him about this idea, this short guy rap. And he said, well, you know, we represent um, a, a hip hop artist here at the agency. And I said, oh, that's great. So he connected us. And that's where I met my buddy Jensen. Jensen is a phenomenal hip hop artist, a great musician. And I think his biggest talent is as a songwriter. Um, and so Jensen and I are both pretty anal retentive guys that are very detail oriented. So if we're going to tackle a project, we don't want to just sort of half ass it. We want it. We want to make sure that it's the biggest, best thing we can possibly do. So I do a lot of theater with, um, so you think you can dance act, uh, dancers and American Idol singers, um, at least before the pandemic. And so I called upon my friend Tamira Gray, who uh, was in season one of American Idol, a bunch of dancers from So You Think You Can Dance. We really just brought it for this production. Made this music video called Little Dude Anthem. It went viral. I thought it was a great sort of example of a cool song, cool beat, great songwriting, but also really funny and a great way for us to sort of showcase our production prowess. We thought it was just going to be a one-off and Jensen and I realized like, hey, like this is a great combination of our talents. So I'm a director too. So I've, I've been directing all of our music videos. So we said, hey, what else appeals to us that we would want to collaborate on? And we both instinctually said nostalgia. Uh, for me, nostalgia defines so much of the work that I want to be creating. And so we made Back to the 90s. Everybody do the Carlton. Now pawn system boom bumping, thumping. Wu-Tang, Outkast, Biggie Smalls, PC Boys, Pearl Jam, Mixtape, turn it up, make some noise. It took two years to conceptualize the video. Um, I knew, you know, we were paying for it out of our own pockets. We didn't get any branding or sponsorships at that point. So um, really had to put a lot of money and time in to make it even feasible. Because the idea was, the original idea was, how can we showcase as many genres of 90s music in one video as possible, make the song good and catchy, uh, and as many visuals from the 90s as possible representing those genres. And it became clear we needed to settle on a, a Backstreet Boys style chorus because while it all it sounds good it's also really fun it's really it's over the top funny with the you know the choreography and everything it's pretty so take me back to the years i'm missing all day all night french kissing oh how you help me grow i never wanna let you go girl you took my breath away got a whole lot more to say what's another rhyme for a i wish that we could say in the night the way it's kind of worked with all of our songs, not just back to the 90s, is <clears throat> Jensen and I will write uh, the initial pass together. Um, he'll sort of focus on the musicality of it. I'll focus on the jokes and, and you know, sort of where we can kind of find the humor in the lyrics. Um, we had together written a version of the chorus, which was okay. It wasn't great. And we were like, you know, we really need uh, to bring in a pop singer-songwriter that can really capture... Uh, the Backstreet Boys style in a way that we really couldn't. And that's when we brought in our buddy Jared Lee, who he's written for Jason Derulo. Uh, he just wrote one of the most recent New Kids on the Blocks tracks. Jared's awesome. And I think one of the 
one of the things that's been so exciting for me just being in Los Angeles is, you know, our network of such talented human beings that we get to collaborate with uh, is seeming, seems to be endless sometimes. And Jared, you know, it took, I remember sitting in the room, he came up with that initial melody within 10 seconds and we were like, that's it. Um, and then we started to sort of conceptualize what f the funny lyrics would be. We, we loved the idea of what's another word that would rhyme with a, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so it was fun. And, and, um, you know, the song came together pretty quickly after that, our buddy, uh, a songwriter, uh, his sort of stage name is dirty Hollywood. Uh, it's an awesome guitarist. He's uh, a hell of a songwriter and even better human being. He wrote the grunge Nirvana style chorus for us. Dirty's actually in that portion as the guitarist in that section in the video. He also helped write the main melody of Back to the 80s, which we later did. Um, and, you know, we're continuing to collaborate. Like I'm doing a, a Nickelodeon show right now that Dirty just helped write a song for us for. So um, I really am big on when people sort of help us out with our projects, our passion projects, sort of paying it forward and making sure that we continue to collaborate on bigger and better things that hopefully put some better money in their pockets. Like I said to you before we started recording, the chorus of Back to the 90s just in a heartbeat sums up. It's such a visceral experience to watch it because it sums up exactly how I feel about nostalgia in the 90s. Um, doing Back to the 80s, was that just as challenging for you? Because that's a huge, production significantly more challenging uh one of the things that i've always loved about my team i have a production company called small red cape we are sort of the the entity that tries to create all of these things every time we want to one-up it you know i don't want to just sort of replicate something especially you know back to the 90s got 100 million views we charted at number 11 on billboard we joined the backstreet boys in las vegas i mean so much crazy stuff happened from that project that when you're doing a sequel that everyone's asking for it's like well okay how do we how do we go bigger? Knowing that we're probably not going to hit 100 million views again, but a lot of people are going to see it. So, you know, back to the 90s was our first attempt at like, okay, how do we show as many visuals as possible in the shortest amount of time? And then the task for back to the 80s was, okay, well, let's do that same approach, except let's literally cut to a different visual on every reference, on every line. And I did not want to do it green screen. Aside from a couple of things that absolutely had to be green screen, like our Top Gun moment, every single set is practically built. This one goes out to my ladies with the stylish crimped hair and all my fellas sporting mullets with that rat tail flare. We do the cabbage patch and shoulder pads and acid wash jeans. Bon Jovi, Bowie, Tina Prince, we in the 80s. Back to the 80s took about a year to write the song. Um, there were a lot more sort of instruments and musicians and things involved in the actual production of the track. Uh, but once we got to shooting it, we shot back to the eighties, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this by comparison, back to the nineties was shot over two consecutive days in 2016. We started shooting back to the eighties in 2018, uh, and finished like 2019. I think I'm right about that. It took about a year to shoot over seven or eight different production dates. The biggest of which was our chorus section, which was a high school prom. We wouldn't be able to do this now in the way the state of the world is, but we packed about 250 people into a high school gym and threw a rock concert, our 80s prom. And it was awesome because the entire crowd was composed of our closest friends, our family. We got you know, two giant confetti cannons. It was nuts. And we shot that last. So after a year of work, it was a real feeling of accomplishment to figure out how to puzzle piece this thing together. remember back to our first back to the 80s shoot uh we got i think we did like 25 setups or something it was insane over like two days and we thought we had accomplished so much and i remember laying it out on the edit timeline after the shoot and it was like seven percent of the song <laughs> we had so much more to go um so we were both excited and super disheartened that like we had 
we had a lot to do. You had a lot of recurring um, recurring actors, didn't you, in it as well, in both? Yeah, it's a great point to bring up. Like our friend Lindsay Taylor, who's an incredible choreographer, was our Britney Spears. She was also our Madonna in Back to the 80s. You know, Dirty certainly is in Back to the 80s as well. He's in the sort of Tears for Fears bridge. He's also our guitarist in the 80s prom. The girl who played Tanya Harding for us, she was our Shelley Long in Back to the 80s. So you'll see, if you watch both videos back to back, you'll notice a lot of the same people. We just wanted to throw in as many kind of little little Easter egg tie-ins as we could. And then our plan is to do Back to the 2000s as our next sort of major thing. We just got thrown off track by, you know, the destruction of civilization and a, a giant worldwide pandemic. <laughs> That little small fact, I did see your Easter egg playing at the end of Back to the 80s at the very end of the credits, the very long credits because it's such a huge team. Um, I mean, you did cram so much in and I imagine it was a really exciting process to be kind of sitting there at the beginning going, what do we want to include? But did you just find yourself snowballing idea after idea and there were so many things that you wanted to include? Did you have to cull them or did you kind of wake up at 3 a.m. six months later going, oh, shoulda, woulda? We're super diligent about, about our brainstorming process. So we did this for both back to the 90s and back to the 80s, brainstormed huge lists, categories uh, of pop culture. So we would separate it by, okay, what's some of the animation we want represented? You know, back to the 90s, uh, the claymation of Celebrity Deathmatch was like top of the list for us. Doug was top of the list for us. You know, what kind of obviously music styles do we want represented in the song? What kind of TV shows do we want to tackle? Uh, what kind of toys, what kind of merchandise, uh, what kind of clothing, what kind of wardrobe. So we'll go through and create huge just lists, just spitballing, researching online, thinking back to our own childhoods. Had to do a little bit more research for Back to the 80s because we were babies in Back to the in, in, in the 80s. Um, so once we get done with that list, we start trying to sort of gibberish our way through what it would sound like to a very basic beat. Um, and then it starts to, to really take shape. But in answer to your question, we probably chose 20% from each of those lists. So like we actually wrote, before we wrote Back to the 80s, we wrote a second Back to the 90s. Uh, that's like a Green Day kind of vibe uh, with all of the stuff we cut out. Matrix, uh, Titanic. I mean, there's so much stuff we did not include. Um, but the problem was it felt like the same beat. And we didn't want to just do the same thing again. So it'll probably die on the cutting room floor. But maybe at some point we'll do another kind of 90s-esque um, uh, project because it's always going to be relevant to us. Please do, first of all. Um, this is a two-part question. You mentioned the Backstreet Boys. That was a great video where AJ surprised you, incredibly jealous. How was it being with them in Vegas? And part two of the question is who is someone from the 90s, from a TV show, band, artist that you haven't met that you would really love to? Oh, that's a really good question. So first of all, the Backstreet Boys thing was was really great. They were really cool to, uh, you know, just kind of help promote us. They were at the time doing their Vegas residency. So our momentum certainly also was helping to promote that. So it was a really sort of symbiotic thing. Um, it was great. Like going to Vegas and and sort of hanging with them felt like uh, just a great endorsement of the success of the project. I also give them a lot of credit for leaning into the humor of it because that you know we're ultimately parodying them in a in a a funny way, but kind of making fun in a fun you know in a nice way. So they were they were really cool at at um, uh, just sort of embracing that. Um, you know, all those sort of endorsements we got them. You know, we had so many people tweeting us and contacting us and sharing the video from the 90s. Um, you know, I remember distinctly on my Twitter timeline that first week we went vi viral, Smash Mouth tweeted me and said, you forgot about us. And I just thought, OK, this is like top top moment for me where Smash Mouth is annoyed that I didn't reference them in my video. You might as well be walking on the sun. So those kinds of, of endorsements, Backstreet Boys included, was just a really great way to sort of legitimize things and helped us significantly as we looked to leverage the success from that project into other avenues. So for me, I was able to leverage it into a lot of directing work and commercials, um, additional music videos. I'm directing a music video for a 90s artist right now that is a direct 
uh, piece of the success, a direct offshoot of, of some of the momentum we were able to create after back to the 90s. Um, so things like that were really helpful. Getting endorsements from big 90s personalities and bands and pop culture icons was was really gratifying and really humbling, to be honest with you, about that they really liked the, the thing we put together. And I will say Back to the 90s has set up almost all of my you know, professional success thereafter. I'm doing, uh, I'm voicing an animated series right now for a major network that comes out in September. And one of the reasons um, uh, I got the role, I think, is because they needed someone who could sort of sing and be funny all together. There's some real musicality to the show. Um, so I attribute a lot of my subsequent success uh, professional success to back to the 90s and sort of personal success it, it just feels really good to bring a bunch of people around a topic that the whole family can enjoy and that holds a really special place in our hearts i will also tell you uh and i'm happy to say this publicly is we shot back to the 90s four days after trump won in 2016 and there was a really shitty feeling on on set initially of just like oh boy uh, the whole world feels like it's going to fall apart. Little did we know it would. Um, but there was this real feeling of, of sort of happiness and excitement on set to kind of harken back to a simpler, better time on set. And it really sort of like helped us, um, everybody on set kind of, you know, head in a more positive direction after that, uh, back to the 80s as well. So looking forward to getting back to those better times now that that demented human being is out of office. We were all waiting. We were all waiting for it. Um, and someone that you haven't met that you would like oh, to. Oh, right, right. So someone I haven't met from the 90s that I would like to collaborate with. So, so many different people I think would be awesome. Uh, but I think my sister, my little sister would give me huge street cred if we were able to involve John Stamos in something because she's had a crush on him since childhood i actually i was doing a play one time with a stage uh, manager who was doing a, a another play with him and she got a little message from him to my sister and she thought she thought it was the coolest thing so if i actually was able to collaborate with john stamos on something at some point a music video a film something commercial i think my sister would give me uh some some pretty awesome props why do you think um nostalgia is really big for want of a better word, um, at the moment, people seem to be really celebrating and embracing the 80s and 90s. Why do you think that is? You know, I think it's sort of twofold. One, as we get older, you and I are around the same age, we start to reflect more fondly on things we may have taken for granted growing up. The simplicity of youth, not having to think about taxes and mortgages and relationships and, you know, success. I mean, you know, our biggest problems were like, oh boy, I got to, you know, make it home in time after school so I can heat up my hot pockets or whatever. Um, so I think the simplicity of childhood becomes more and more appealing as we age. Um, and I think we're at an interesting age in our 30s to sort of reflect back on, um, you know, a time where the world was simpler, not just our lives, but the world was simpler. You know, the economy was pretty good in the 90s. Um, we could fly without having to take our shoes off. Um, I think the world has progressively gotten compl more and more complicated as we've gotten older. And I am sure our parents felt the same thing. Uh, and so that's one side of it. I also think that the 90s in particular and the 80s too uh, were full of colors and wacky styles and ex eccentricities that we may look back on the 2020s and feel the same way, you know, kids today. But I think that there is a real appetite for the wackiness of the styles of all sorts of pop culture for those decades. I also think the other thing that sort of factors into it a little subconsciously is that it was the last bastion of a non-tech life. It was the last time you had to memorize someone's phone number. It was the last time you had to, 
um, you know, find out how to get somewhere without, you know, immediately having it available in your car. So I think we maybe took for granted the the stuff we had to do to like work a little bit harder in life to get something that we just take for granted that's very easy now. Um, so yeah, to me, it's like that last moment in time before technology kind of took over in a very different way. Um, so I think all of those things combined make the 90s especially, but the 80s as well, really appealing time period that is finding its way back in style. I mean, you think about sort of high-waisted jeans for women now are sort of coming back. Um, you know, uh, flannel like you're wearing, like, uh, you know, I think that there's things are start to feel sort of cyclical in pop culture, uh, especially when it, it harkens back to a simpler time. Very well said, and I couldn't agree more. Um, you mentioned your mystery 90s artists that you're doing the music video for, and back to the 2000s. Are you working on anything else that you can share, and is your focus going to be kind of a nostalgia-based content at the moment? Yeah, so, you know, I've been very thankful to have a very diversified entertainment career, especially in a pandemic when, you know, I was doing three shows before this all went down and they all sort of went their separate ways because, you know, the industry shut down for a while. So right now uh, I'm voicing a new animated series. I can tell you it's with Nickelodeon. Um, comes out later in the year. Very excited about it. Um, it's a very like Nick animation. And I think all animation in general is starting to sort of get back to some of the edgier content that was commonplace in the 90s. So what we're working on has a lot of that kind of Ren and Stimpy edge, um, a lot of that kind of adult humor that was found in some of those old school Nickelodeon cartoons like Rocco's Modern Life and um, Hey Arnold, uh, Doug, certainly. So it's been really cool working uh, with Nickelodeon throughout the pandemic. Very excited for the show to premiere. Uh, I'll be able to talk a lot more about what exactly that is um, later on. And yeah, working on a music video right now with an iconic 90s uh, artist, which I'm very excited about because hopefully we can continue to leverage that into working with more and more 90s personalities, which I just personally love. And it's fun that anytime I can combine music, good music and comedy, and nostalgia all into the same thing. I'm a happy guy. Um, so yeah, lots of voiceover, lots of directing work, uh, and then things are slowly starting to creep back here in Los Angeles. So I look forward to returning back to set too. I do a, I do an uh, live action Nickelodeon show where I play a villain on it. It's a superhero show. Um, so those are kind of the main things right now. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting back to some more passion projects. I think one of the things that I really tried to focus on in the pandemic is the only way I could really truly keep my crew safe with small red cape is to not put them on set. Uh, and so now that things are starting to creep back to some sense of some sort of normalcy, it's feeling safer to, to kind of get back on a set. We just shot a music video for another artist uh, about a month ago. You know, we were all basically wearing hazmat suits, but the feeling of relief to be back on a set on a soundstage being all around each other again was immensely gratifying and one that I am hopeful will continue to do uh, into the foreseeable future. So yeah, it's kind of what I'm currently working on. I'm so excited to see your music video and everything else that you bring out. I am such a fan. Um, really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, I can't wait to see what more you do. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm honored. Thank you so much for your support and for uh, being a fan of the 90s right along with me. Do, do, do. Great Scott, we have a winner announcement of this amazing Bob Gale book. First of all, if you want to buy the book, if you're not lucky enough to win, you want to buy it, I'll put a link, link below of where you can get it. But the winner, now this I thought was quite fitting because most, with the question to win was, if you could go back in time, where would you go? Pretty much everyone answered Back to the 80s, which is pretty fitting considering Ben is on the show and he did the Back to the 80s video and also with nostalgia, so there was a good chance. That Stuff's was... not as good anymore as it used to be. <laughs> that was gonna happen. Um, so the winner, there were a lot to pick from and it was really hard to choose, Retro Reels. Retro Reels, what did they say? Now Retro Reels said, first of all, he loves how Bob Gale protected the franchise from being exploited, such as other franchises has been. But he said if he could go back to time, he would go back to the 80s, 
but he would watch the movies for the first time again and remember the experience of being amazed when they orig he originally saw them. He'd, ha like he'd, have to, he'd have to also be the same age though, because there is part of, if you went back now as the age you are, those mm. movies might not be as special, although, oh, I, I doubt it. There was some absolute beauts in the 80s. So the reason I liked that, someone said Henry VIII, which I thought was pretty cool, but most people were like, I'll go back to be in the movie, and that was quite a common answer. So I liked that this was to actually go back and experience them and have yeah. that magic again. So well done, Retro Reels. Email me at info at lifeaftermovies.com. And this book is yours. And also, how cool were those Back to the 80s and Back to the 90s videos? I mean, we watched them and Lisa was so excited to, to do the interview because they were so well done. I mean, they could have been done so badly, but you could tell it was somebody who really cared. And you, obviously the 90s one, I'm a little bit older than you, so that was struck a chord and the 80s one really struck a chord with me, but well done, Ben. They were fantastic. Uh, Ash liked the bit the most in the 80s video where they did uh, the poolside scene with the red bikini. Oh yes, we loved a bit of that in the 80s, the old yeah. red bikini shot. <laughs> anyway, until the next web show, we don't know when it is, so make sure you subscribe so you get told when it is. Have a fabulous week and enjoy the 80s and 90s videos. Hmm.